Welcome back to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. I'm Insetic. With me again is just Blank Tester. Hey kids, how's it going? And so we are continuing on to the second level, the sequel that everyone was waiting for, School 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... It's kind of neat that they named it School 2 since School 1 is in the other game. Right. And in Tony Hawk 2, they definitely... Neversoft definitely worked to incorporate a lot of real-world skateboarding spots. Much like how the San Francisco Streets level from Tony Hawk 1 was a collection of, you know, popular spots in San Francisco, whether just for skateboarders or in real life. You know, like Chinatown and then the Embarcadero Plaza and such. School 2 is kind of a collection of, yeah, like I said, popular spots that all happen to be at schools. Um, yeah. That sort of are, you know, legendary in the skateboard world. Like you saw me just do the leap of faith. And I'm basically just going to be reading out of a history textbook here. Like I'm not yeah. in the skating culture, but... That spot is known for Jamie Thomas attempting to jump it and uh, breaking his board on impact from the landing. <laughs> and he's the only one who tried. Uh, you'll see... Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, hazard to watch out for. You'll see this rail, when I get it, will be called uh, Gon's Rail. That's a... Mm. Uh, there was a skateboarder named Mark Gonzalez who is like one of the OGs and uh, uh, did a video part where he grinds a rail that they basically recreated. Um, That's awesome. And then there's a, you know, kind of the secret area you can get to in this level uh, will be Carlsbad, if mm. if people know that. <laughs> like I said, I feel like I'm reading out of a textbook here. Like, I, I can't tell you much about those places in real life, but... And that's, yeah. I think, you know, when people were talking... I remember when Tony Hawk 5 came out. Um, like THPS 5 came out um, people were talking about why is it bad what what about it doesn't capture um, the things that were so great in the other ones and like there were lots of technical reasons for that but I think a lesser a lesser commented thing would be that it's clear that Neversoft had very strong roots in the skating community you know, like if you asked me to make a skating game, besides my lack of technical knowledge, I also have a, a, a huge lack of skater knowledge, you know, and so mm -hmm. I wouldn't know the kinds of historical events to include um, and the, the kinds of important cultural um, touchstones to, to reach, to reach for. But they know exactly what they were doing and they... They carefully crafted uh, each level to kind of evoke a lot of that stuff, and that's like that ain't that's nothing to uh, nothing to shrug at. That's like yeah, a major yeah. component of what makes these levels so good. Right, right, and yeah, uh, uh, and so I, I do remember when Tony Hawk Five came out. Sort of, I think what you're getting at is that the levels were really basic and mm -hmm. generic and just like symmetrical just ramps and rails just kind of thrown there yeah like there was nothing there was nothing evoking the real world of skating yeah no because it was made by people who are game developers first and maybe a few of them have skated once or twice but most of them had never skated and didn't know anything about skating Right. And it was really obvious from the game they made. <laughs> right. Uh, you can also look at, for example, the game Thrasher Skate and Destroy, which mm. came out around the same time, which I have already Gone through, covered. Huh? And, uh, you know, Thrasher Magazine was, like, the important skating ma magazine at the time. And all of those levels are yeah. basically uh, real-life locations. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in New York City, you're going around Washington Square or Washington Park or whatever it is, hitting up the Brooklyn Banks. Then you go to San Francisco and go down the hills. Then go to Embarcadero Plaza in that game too. Can I just say real quick, you um, you know, when after you covered Sk uh, Thrasher Skate and Destroy, I have been seeing so many people wearing. Like I'm not saying this is you're doing, but <laughs> I've been I've seen a remarkable number of people wearing. 
Thrasher shirts and hoodies and, and all that stuff. And I guess it's still, or maybe it's back on the rise again. But, like, it seems much more popular than I remember it being. Um, even now. Which is, like, that's cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's... Maybe I'm just uh, not remembering. I just never noticed how much the brand uh, had. But, uh, I don't know. I just I started noticing it more after you did that LP. Right. Oof. Yeah, no, I think with uh, kind of the rise of uh, Instagram skateboarding, I guess is what you could call it, where, uh, yeah. where you know, people people learn those, those I don't know, crazy Brands. tricks or crazy tricks and film it once and make it an Instagram clip and try and get a lot of hits. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, that skateboarding maybe is experiencing a rise. I don't know. I'm not a, yeah, skateboarding, skateboarding has always I, been the kind of thing where it definitely it's the kind of sport that definitely can get uh it's very grammable yeah it's very instagrammable uh it's very uh it's very social media ready mm -hmm. and honestly social media forward you know um making clips of your best uh best tricks and stuff is a thing that you see all the time on youtube and it existed in the skating community long before YouTube was ever born. You know? Right. Yeah. Long before video sharing, video streaming was even feasible. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, I mean, you go back to even the early 90s and the late 80s. And again, I'm just reading out of a history textbook. I haven't actually, you know, I obviously wasn't there and I don't yeah. have a knowledge of all the videos. But, uh, you know, you'd wait for the next uh, blind skateboarding mega part to come out and buy that you know you'd you'd wait for the next baker video to come out and then buy that on vhs and it's like it's kind of the same thing that happens in hip-hop right like before streaming services existed before uh spotify or soundcloud or whatever people would make their mixtapes and spread them around you know it's not just in in hip-hop it's also in like other you know genres of music you know, right. skating had that same sort of culture to it, of yeah. sharing sharing videos, and that's really, uh, uh, hopefully, help helping skating come back from yeah. sort of a dead zone it was in in the early to mid two thousands. Right. So, uh, to well, get back late, to the late, yeah, whatever. Yeah. To get back to the game a bit. Uh, I brought this up in the Tony Hawk One playthrough where wall riding and then jumping out of a wall ride. Maybe in the first game it was an oversight, or maybe they knew about it but didn't expect you to do much with it. But definitely by Tony Hawk 2, they knew that was a part, really, of the game, something you could do. And so as you saw, starting from that first bell, you can wall ride and jump up to the awning where there's a cash pick up there. It, it tells you, like it's yeah. telling you, hey, you need to find a way to get to this, so why don't you try this? Like, these cash pickups are great ways of kind of sh diverting Incentivizing you to experiment yeah. and yeah. learn new techniques of your own. Yeah, and so then wall riding, jumping up there, getting up there leads you on a line where you can go across the roofs and, and get a bunch more cash pickups, um, which I think is just awesome. Once again... It's great game yeah. design. I mean, there's no tutorial for it, and they're, they're teaching right. you things by... Encouraging you to experiment and just learn on your own. Yeah. Meanwhile, contrast with, uh, I remember it's TJ Lavin's BMX where you need, after not having to wall ride the entire game. Oh my God. You yeah. needed to wall ride to hit a switch in like the last level. And since I hadn't had to wall ride the entire game, I did, I forgot that existed until a yeah, YouTube I, comment told me, Hey, you need to wall ride this thing. And I went, there's wall rides in this game. Yeah. Like, it was <laughs> stupid. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, as idiotic, you saw, yeah. I was struggling to reach some of those balconies with the cash pickups. And so I had to back out and buy more stats. I will say, though, manualing makes street based skateboarders a lot more effective in this game. You know, mm. in the first game, the way to get a high score was to just find a half pipe and bust your special tricks back and forth. 
bust the backflip or front flip that everyone had as a filler trick. Uh, versus in this game, like I said, the manually Ooh. really makes being able to do flipping in, grinding, flipping out manually you know, over to the next location, such and such, like a lot more effective. Um, they still make like air and ollie and hang time and speed necessary mm -hmm. by having these big gaps that you'll need to jump. And especially even kind of by the halfway point in the game. Like if you know the level Venice Beach, um, there's some required uh, transfers, quarter pipe to quarter pipe, where you need almost full speed, air, ollie, etc. to get. Yeah. But uh, yeah, what I meant, I mentioned the secret area. So when you go hit the hidden tape and uh, land on one of the flagpoles or land on the other side, you will drop into Carlsbad where they have recreated the uh, Carlsbad staircase that huh. uh, unfortunately is not here anymore. <laughs> it was uh, like dug up and replaced. Oh, like, really? 10 years ago or so. Yeah. Huh. People skated it too hard. I yeah. guess. But yeah, you can either jump to the left and recreate the actual Carlsbad jump or uh, go down the stairs for the Carlsbad 11 set. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just like... That's great. You hit one of these and, and the gap references that and you, you just know, yep, that was that was what they were getting at. That was a real thing, yeah. Oh, I, I should mention, I think this is the only game that does this in the Tony Hawk series where there's a like gap list that I don't think is required to... 100% a character, but mm. um, yeah, in the main menu there will be a gap list that that says the name of every gap in a level and whether you've done it or not. And oh. I know, like, Zindictive, of course, in his, uh, you know, got a 100% the game style, I think has gone and gotten every gap in his yeah. playthrough, but I won't be doing that. Um, if that's, like, the only way to unlock some thing for, you know, 100%, I'll just input cheat codes. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I know they're the final level, or, or like, you know, the final secret level, you have to 100% the game with every character, and I'm not going to do that. Um, but, yeah. so, there is one more Easter egg, sort of, to school, too. And that is, if you grind the roll call open says me rail on the first school bell ring, well, the one 20 seconds in, it will open the gym for you. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, and so the gym is two rooms, basically the pool room with uh, a massive pool and then diving boards where they all have <laughs> uh, gaps if you can lip trick off them. But oh, wow. I, for some reason, I just kept grinding them. I guess I kept having an angle of like one degree <laughs> rather than <laughs> the zero degrees you'd have needed. And then on the other side is like the basketball court, mm. with which has got some cool stuff in there. Yeah, but trust that's me on really this neat. Guy. Yeah, open says me. Yeah, get it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, then over here on the basketball court, you can I don't know shoot hoops three points. Three points, nice. Yeah, and there's like a super hard gap to do where you jump off of uh, the kicker and grind this. Uh, backboard. Oh my god! It's, it's pretty precise. I, I was trying to show it off, but you know something, and you might have seen this if you've seen the on head, odd headers video of uh, oh. 100 things you didn't know about Tony Hawk. That's at least where I saw it. Yeah, there's a weird rail, an invisible rail that you can grind to uh, leave the gym and get over to this now partially unloaded part of the level. Huh. Yeah, I never knew about this as a kid. It, it was only from Odd Header's video where I learned about it. Yeah, weird. And, like, you can actually hit the invisible rail and grind your way back, but huh. obviously I didn't. I just hit the... In, I just hit the invisible wall. But, yeah. Yeah. School 2. A level filled Damn. with many secrets. Yeah. Legendary level. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, after making your way through School 2, we will go to the first competition. We're globe-traveling in Tony Hawk 2, baby! And mm -hmm. our first competition will be over in France, in Marseille. Marseille? I'll make I sure to look Mars it up before, actually, you know, before yeah. that video. But yeah, we'll be going to the first competition next time, so I'll see you then. <laughs>